Uh, hello YouTube, so today I'll make like a tutorial for Java, an introduction to Java, and basically it's just some similar uh, commands. So I will teach this in Ready to Learn Java, which is a different IDE from Eclipse, and it, it operates in a different manner. So uh, let's start off by just doing a basic introduction. So at the beginning you would look at this IDE, and you'd be wondering what you type in here. Don't worry, it should be easy. So, <clears throat> uh, do the following. So you start off by making a public class. And let's call this whatever we want. But this will be the name of the file. So let's call it, uh, hello world. And then we do open bracket and then close bracket. <coughs> okay. Pretty much what this does is it creates like a file container while importing a bunch of objects in here so here we will import um, basically classes so import alternate libraries slash classes and this is basically the container <coughs> for all the voids etc so pretty much inside here you would have to make a public static main void string Close bracket args. So what this does, this is pretty much the main execution, the main program. So once Java sees main and there's no arguments inside the bracket, then the, the code inside here will execute. So pretty much what happens here, so you don't get confused, these two dashes are comment lines. So this is whatever the text says towards the programmer. This The computer doesn't see anything here. The thing here affects the computer, I could even say do the windows. Nothing will happen to the computer because this isn't seen, this is ignored by the by the programming language or by the compiler. This creates the public class slash the file name, hello world. They here, okay, well, uh, fix that later. Public class, hello world, open bracket. This pretty much makes a container for what should be contained within the public class. So if I close the pop the bracket here and press indent, you'll see that this is excluded outside. Once I put it within, it's pushed inside. All right. Now for the main, uh, it goes like public static voiding. Whoops. Uh, okay. Public. So this pretty much says it can be accessed anywhere. Static similarly. Void is like kind of like an expression. You can kind of use like a command. You'll learn it later. Main is the name of it. In Java, the standard main program is always called main. And then these are the arguments, or if you want to pass through a string, etc. Java. Okay. So let's start off by saying uh, system. Let's first see if this works. Uh, it works. It says execution finished. I don't have to actually add something. So we're going to do system out the print link. Hello world. Will it do anything? It outputs hello world here. And this is hello world finish standard input slash output ready to program. Press close. So we do run. The compiler compiles the code. It detects that there is a main. And it, it executes this code. What system to out print lin does is it pretty much prints out whatever is inside the quotes. Which is known as a string. So we can do some more. Try this. It outputs it. All fine. So you can also do. <coughs> sorry. You can also do many commands with this, and you can also input a string. So the difference between Ready to Learn Java and in Eclipse is if I try to declare, let's try to declare a string. So let's do string high equals that system. Or if I remember incorrectly, it was for boolean. Alright, so let's try this. So normally, right now what it's doing is it's outputting high. So I put something here. I don't actually put anything in the system now to print line. But since I declared high as a string, and I also gave it a value, a defined value. Once I click run, 
it will output this text. Now, an additional thing is you can also declare integers with this. So let's do int hello equals three. Now let's try to add three. Oh no, not three. Hello to the equation. Let's see if it'll work. And it adds three to the end of the string. All right. Now you can also do math with this. So let's say hello, and let's say by equals five. Let's do just turn that out. Now you could also do slash n, I believe. We should make a new line. Excuse me if I'm doing this wrong. I believe it was some. Okay. Trying to run this. Uh, I kind of forgot how to execute to this command. Ah, shoot. <coughs> okay, I'll do it in a later tutorial. So system dot print lin that okay and then here let's do hello plus by and it puts eight why because hello is three by was five hello plus by should be equal to eight you can also do multiplication eighteen etc now let's go over another type of sort of call it void so let's do public that void calculate math <coughs> and, okay so let's first declare a global variable so what a global variable is is a variable that can be found in either one of these voids so right now what hello does is it's only found here if I try to do system now dot print in hello in calculate math, it won't work. It'll only be found in main. So in order to do a public a public variable, a global variable, you would go outside of any void inside the public class. <coughs> Data public static public static int I see if this works. Okay. Public static Alright, now I'll just do calc. <coughs> okay. So now we declared two variables and i equals zero, z equals zero. And now we just called the public static void calculate math. And inside calculate math, because these are global variables, let's do i equals five. Will it work? Alright. Now okay, wait, I still got it. So, uh, previous i is 0, new i 5. What this public static void does is it takes this variable i and it makes it 5. So, before calling the void calculate math, the value of i was 0, afterwards it became 5. <coughs> it can also make a pass through a string or any other basic method, so to say. And it would do the desired task. This is similar to uh, procedures and Turing, if you watch my other tutorials, how that's operated. Now we can also go back here. And you basically realize that another method to go through this would be doing a while. <coughs> so a loop can, be, can run through using a while uh, statement. This is similar to a loop and end loop, exit one loop, and turn. So, to do that, we first have to make a boolean, so boolean exit code. Wow, it should be true, boolean. Okay. Alright. Uh, okay. 
So while execute code is false, it'll execute this forever. But let's say if I scan the right to 15, I will make execute code equals true. Okay, and now in here, let's do plus plus. So what I did here was a basic if statement. So if i is greater than or equal to 15, this is do equal to 15, then I'll make execute code equals true. And when this loop will execute, you will notice that this only executes while execute code is false. So since this is true, this will basically exit the loop. What in the calculate math method, that plus plus increments i by 1. So let's click on run. Okay. Equals equals. So in, in Java, C sharp, or any other language, whenever you're doing an if statement with a Boolean operator, you have to have two equals signs, one beside each other. <coughs> Well, and then click on run now. And here it executed from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 14, and then new i15. <clears throat> so I'll end off the tutorial here, and I'll make more tutorials in the future. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'm sorry for the coughing.